What's up everybody out there? Welcome back to yet another addictive fishing tutorial. My name is Jordan Kanigi and today we're talking about one of the most versatile and effective ways to go out and catch salmon, trout, and steelhead. If you guys want to learn more about this double bead setup, stay tuned, it's coming at you right now. So first things first I want to talk about this double setup is check your local regulations on your fishery that you're fishing and make sure it's allowed to use two different hooks. In like Canada or different places in different rivers around even the Pacific Northwest or even the Midwest or East Coast, you may not be able to use two hooks on your local river. So this tutorial is good knowledge for you if you travel and go somewhere else, but it might be illegal on your local river. So be sure to check that first. But the obvious reasons why we love this double setup is because you have two presentations in the water at all times. Being able Able to use different size beads, yarnies, baits, or anything of the sort, and you have two different presentations, top and bottom, going down the river at all times, can make you that much more effective on staying in front of those fish and giving them something that makes them want to bite. First things first, what I would say is the most important part of your setup when you're using these double beads, because you're using long leaders, is your rod setup. What I have here is a 9.9 Okuma Guide Select Pro. Any rod that you can use is fine, as long as it's over nine foot, and that's gonna help you in the adaption of that float fishing. You want something that's long enough to make good line mends, which we'll show you here in a minute, and be able to correctly drift that presentation down the river so that you're staying in front of those fish with both of those setups. So I have a 9.9 Okuma Guide Select Pro reeled with a C40 Kaimar by Okuma again. Again, I like the C40, especially if I'm being stuck on the bank because I'm gonna have to let a lot of line out and I can fish a long distance with this bead presentation like this because I'm float fishing. I have that reel lined with a 40, 50, or a 60 pound braided line. I prefer the high vis line so that I can see it out on the water and I can make sure I'm correctly mending my line throughout the drift. It's not imperative that you use it, but I like to always tie a 15 to a 20 pound fluorocarbon bumper to the end of my braided line. That way my line can slide smoothly through my bobber, just like so. And it allows me to make those bends and have a lot less visibility from that line down in front of those fish. So a 15 to a 20 pound fluorocarbon bumper is key in my opinion, but it's not detrimental in this setup. The way I connect that is with a little blood knot here. So I tie that blood knot, you can find those knots in the different sort of knot styles on our tutorials on addictive fishing here. But I tie a blood knot with that 15 to 20 pound fluorocarbon and I run that all the way down to my bobber stop. And what you see right above this, this blood knot is what just that is, that's that bobber stop there. Just a little rubber stopper. Uh, there's a few different companies that make them, but it's just that little rubber stopper comes on a nice little piece of wire, slide your line through, pull it tight, and you're ready to go. A normal bobber stop, just a thread stopper, or any kind of Dacron line that uses that as a stopper can work just as well. The next step is to have those beads that come with those bobbers on top of that bobber so that this thing doesn't slide past your rubber stopper. So you can see the effectiveness of that little rubber stopper. Little bead hits it first, big bead keeps this from going over that little bead, and then I have my float itself. There's two different styles of floats that you can use for this bobber dog setup. Really anything will work. I've seen people use cork floats, I've seen people use these normal floats, these inline. I've seen people use fixed floats, but really the best way to fish these two setups is either with normal foam float. This is a 3 8 you can go all the way up to half ounce, maybe even bigger if you're fishing some big water with some big leads, or with one of these little chubby floats. And these are for what we call bobber dogging. It's a method that works from the bank. We also have some more tutorials on our page, Addicted Fishing here. It shows you exactly how to bobber dog. But these two floats are what are best for this adaption. This one has a nice flat bottom, so it actually catches the current and pulls your stuff along. This one here is a little more versatile where you can fish it in all kinds of different water, whether it's shallow, deep, and you can adjust that up and down to not be getting snagged on the bottom because the key with this setup is to be on the bottom at all times. What I do after I run that through and down to my 3 8 ounce or half ounce bobber is I go right to just a normal barrel swivel and a clevis. What I've done here, instead of using a three-way, I've just taken a normal barrel swivel with that clevis. I tie my heavy line, my 15 or 20 pound, onto the top end that has the clevis on it. So that if I'm getting snagged, I'm pulling on that end with that heavier line than I am with my leader line that's on there. So, I have that clevis. I have just a little quarter ounce Dave's Tangle Free Weight. You can use lead, you can use just the little preformed uh, little little bell weights that you can also get at any store. But a quarter ounce all the way up to a half ounce, all the way up to a three quarter ounce can work really good for this, depending on the kind of water that you're fishing. And we'll talk more about that when we hit the river. What I have from there is just about a two and a half to a three foot leader. 
down to my first bead. And this is 12 pound fluorocarbon. Depending on where you're fishing, again, you can go all the way down to four to six pound, but I use a little bit heavier line than I normally would with like a jig or a float presentation because I don't want to keep snagging up, which I'm going to be doing naturally by using this method and breaking off these valuable beads that I have on here. So I'm going to show you really quick a couple different ways to peg your bead. What I do a lot of times, if I have the right size bead, is I just do a little bead knot. There's a lot of different ways to do this. You can tie glass beads in line to your line so that your bead can't slide past it. You can use those same stoppers that I use for my bobber stop below the bead so that it won't slide down to your hook because the gap in between that bead and your hook is imperative to being successful in landing the fish and we'll talk about more about that in just a second. But what I mean by a bead knot, this is super simple. This is something I do and I'm, you have to make sure to use semi heavier line to do this or else it will break when you do hook up on a fish. So I have my bead free sliding on my line here. All I do, and this is a little Alaska trout trick, is I take my line and I feed it through my bead two times. So I'm gonna go through it once, I'm gonna go through it twice, I'm gonna take back what I said there about two times and I'm actually gonna do it three times. So I have my line through there once, I'm gonna go through there twice, I'm gonna go through there a third time just like this, and then I'm gonna pull that thing tight. And you can see, obviously, because I've done that, that bead can't go anywhere and it's stationary. If you're using a soft bead or you're using some sort of, of uh, hybrid bead, like an incognito bead, you're not gonna be able to do that. So you're gonna wanna actually put a T-stop or one of those little rubber stoppers down below that bead so that doesn't slide down onto your hook. So I've done that. I'm gonna take my first number four hook Anywhere from a number two to a number three to a number four hook is what's perfect for this. I don't like to go any smaller than that because I want to be able to hook those fish and two, I want to be able to hook those bigger fish. So this is a size four must add bead hook. I'm going to slide that right through. And for me, I just do a normal fisherman's knot. You can do a, a, any sort of um, egg loop on this or any other method that you want where you can actually connect bait or different things like that. But I'm showing you my quick and easy just to get two beads on here and get them in the water. This is what I do if I'm just exclusively fishing beads here. There's a million ways to do this, but this is my favorite quick, easy and efficient way. So I'm just doing a normal fisherman's knot. I'm gonna pull that tight, just like so. I'm gonna trim my tag here. And there we have it. We have just a perfectly placed 12 mil bead. Now that's that top leader. I like to have that top leader about two to three, never more than about four feet long. If you go more than that, it's gonna become a very big mess trying to cast this and it's gonna create a lot of tangles and a lot of wind knots as you cast through the air. So keeping that first leader in between three to four feet is what's crucial here. So I have that same length leader for my second bead and I'm just gonna tie that directly to the end of that number four hook on my first setup. So this setup still connected to that Dave's tangle. Right here I got about a three foot leader and then I have my other bead here that I'm gonna connect just right to the very end of this here. It's very, very simple. This is one of the easiest ways to set up, very quickest. And again, I'm tying just these normal knots. There's a few different knots you can use to attach this setup to your other hook, but I like to go right to the end of the hook here. Grab that, I'm gonna do six wraps, seven wraps, right to the end of the hook. Make sure to wet my knot, just like so. And I'm gonna tie that right to the back of the end of that hook, right on that shank like that. And that does the trick, you guys. You might think that that's gonna cover up that hook gap a little bit, but I catch just as many fish on the top bead as I do the bottom bead. So, as you can see here, my bottom bead is a lot smaller than my top bead. The top one's a 12. We can use any sort of combination of size of beads here. I've seen people do double 20 mils. I've seen people use 12 mils and then 14 mils, but I always like to have my biggest bead on top. So you can see here, I put my 12 mil bead on first, which is closest to my weight. I have another leader down to this 10 mil bead here. And I like to go bigger to smaller all the time. That actually helps your casting and it fishes a little bit better while it's going through the water. And it would, when I use these smaller beads like this, I actually like to be a little lazy once again. It's another Alaska trout trick that I use. All I'm gonna do, and again, because it's a small bead and I don't need to put a bobber stop, and if I put a toothpick or anything in there, you're gonna be able to see it. It's gonna look funny. So I'm gonna take that. I'm just gonna do a triple overhand here. I'm gonna take my, my hook, run it through my line three times just like so, and bam, there you have it. 
just like that. And that's gonna hold that bead in place and it's not gonna slide around. And that only works on the smaller beads. So if you're using anything over a 12 mil or a 10 mil, you're gonna wanna either one, add a toothpick, use the rubber stopper, um, or any of the little bead pegs that are actually rubber themselves so that you're not hurting your line. But I personally like to do that bead knot a lot. It keeps it in place and it works really, really well if you have fresh line. So if you see that getting warped, like you can see that line here, I've been using this rod all day. So my line's a little stressed out. That I would cut off, I wouldn't use that. This is what it should properly look like running through your bead all the time. But if you get that warp in your line, you get that little bit of a, a fray, you're gonna wanna cut that off and add new leader and run that back to the bead so it's proper. Or again, just add that normal stop, whether it be a bead peg or some sort of stopper below that bead. All right, so that's the basics of the full setup. There's a lot of ways to skin a cat in this situation, guys. There's a lot of different ways, one, to peg your beads. There's a lot of tutorials that we have on our page that talk about bead fishing. So if you guys wanna learn more, be sure to ask questions down here below and comment below with this video and we'll be sure to try to answer them. Or go back and look at a few of the other how to fish bead tutorials that we have. But we're just talking about that basic double setup today. So I have 12 mil on top of a 10 mil. We're gonna step down to the river here and we're gonna show you the very basics on how to actually get this in the water and be properly fishing. So now that we're standing by the river, I'm gonna talk about the most important and probably the hardest part of fishing the double bead setup, and that is the casting of it. This is where I see people struggle the most, whether it's my clients, even myself, when I fish this stuff a ton, I still have problems sometimes getting this line tangled when I cast. So I'm gonna show you a couple tricks here that are gonna make it easier on you to get this stuff out there. First things first, I'll have a lot of people ask me, how do I know how deep to fish? I like to start shallow and then work my way deeper. This is the method that you do not want fishing suspended. You want both these beads down near the bottom of the river or even dragging along the bottom, which is why we use these overweighted bobbers so that they can catch the current and pull our presentation down the river. First things first, when you're fishing a bead, 90% of the time you're gonna wanna make sure it's in some sort of moving water, something that's at least walking speed or faster. It's not a good method to use in super slow or stagnant water because those beads are down there drifting around, around each other. You want them to be able to drag along the bottom with some current and completely fish through that area that you're fishing. So, first things first, we're gonna test out our depth. I'm gonna start shallow here, but what I'm gonna start with is talking about the cast. The way I wanna cast this, and always try to remember these methods, it's gonna make it a lot easier for you, and it's what I teach people every day when I'm out here on the river. And that is always start with your rod tip down river. It's a method that's obviously easy to get tangled in the bushes and everything behind you, but what I always like to do is accentuate my backhand cast. And what I mean by that is I don't wanna be casting overhead, throwing over one shoulder, my upriver shoulder, because so whether you're on the right or the left bank of the river, you want to start with your rod tip pointing down current. And that's going to help you use that right formation and that right form to throw it out there and allow your beads not to get tangled. So first things first, I'm going to check myself, make sure I have a nice clear boundary. I'm standing on this log, so it's a little easier today. But I'm going to make sure I have a nice clear area to be casting from. And I'm going to put my rod down river. I'm going to turn and I'm going to identify where I want to cast to. And then I'm gonna go a slow to fast motion, loading that sensitive tip of that rod, loading that rod, ending high in the air and sending that thing all the way across the river to where I want it to be. I'm gonna start close, I'm gonna go to the middle and then I'm gonna go far. When I use this method, I always wanna to try to start at about 45 degrees up river. You don't wanna cast it straight in front of you and let it go away unless the hole mandates that, unless you only have that spot to cast. You wanna be able to cast up, allow that stuff to sink down to the bottom and then start working its way past you in front of you. So start with my rod tip down river. I'm gonna turn identify where I wanna go. I'm gonna throw that thing, stopping my rod tip high and at the end of my drift, I'm gonna stop my line and make that thing go tight. The key to that is while that's flying through the air, you have both your beads going towards each other at the same point. When you grab your line, they both straighten out, go flat and then fall perfectly on the water best thing to do is try to keep your eyes on those beads as they're flying through the air to make sure they're not tangling. Because the worst thing to do is be sitting here fishing a 50, 60 yard drift and have your beads tangled up and not even fishing the whole time. You're wasting valuable fishing time while that thing's floating down the river if it's not correctly fishing. So I'm gonna show you that again. And it's very, very important. It's something I stress to everybody that does this. And the key point to that is one, starting slow to fast, ending with your rod tip high in the air and then stopping your line at the very end of your cast so that your stuff lays out flat once again. I'm gonna do it for you again. I want you to watch my hands when I do this, everybody. And what I'm gonna do, tip down river, up high. I'm gonna identify my target, I'm gonna cast it, and at the very end, I'm grabbing my line. And I, you can even grab it and pull against it a little bit to make sure you get that tautness in your line. You don't wanna let this stuff just hit the water and pile up on itself, because that's where you're gonna get those tangles. So every time you cast, identify a safe casting spot, look back, identify your cast, 
cast is at 45 upriver, and again, three quarters of the way through that cast, as soon as it's about to hit the water, you're gonna grab that with your hand up here on the, on the rod shaft or right here on top of the bale and stop that line so that it lays out flat and hits the water perfectly. Okay, so now that I've covered that basics of actually casting it, I'm gonna show you what it should look like once it's out there and how it should properly be fishing. So first here, I know I'm not fishing deep enough. I'm gonna shallow up a little bit so that you guys can see what an improper drift looks like. So I'm gonna cast out here nice and close. What you don't wanna see when you're bead fishing is your bobber standing straight up and down like this. That bobber standing straight up and down, it's obviously not hitting the bottom, you're not getting any drag from the bottom of the river, and your beads are suspended up off the bottom out of the strike zone of those fish. Any egg or anything that emulates what these beads are is gonna actually be rolling down the bottom of the river. That's, that's the point of it, is it's hitting the bottom, it's like you're looking like it's a natural presentation, like it's eggs. So you want them rolling down the bottom and hitting the bottom. But there's a fine line in between that. If you're using a small enough lead and you have the sort of hole where you can drag that presentation a long ways with a small piece of lead, you can over accentuate the depth of that drift. But if I'm fishing this, this setup where I'm fishing here to here, short little drifts, I wanna be down and in the strike zone as fast as I can and be effectively fishing that little distance that I have, I'm gonna make sure that I have a proper depth. So I started shallow. I'm gonna go a little bit deeper here. I'm gonna add about a foot. I'm gonna make that same close cast and I'm gonna see if my bobber is doing anything different than it was at the beginning. So as you can see, after that cast, adding about a foot of line, now my bobber's still standing straight up and down, but it has a little bit of a lean to it. So I'm gonna bring that back in. I'm gonna add another six inches of line. And this is key, guys. This is how you catch fish. This is how you get in front of those fish and guarantee you're gonna get them. I'm gonna add about another six to eight inches of line here. I'm gonna cast this back out and I'm gonna wait to see if my bobber's acting any different. There it is. So now you see that that bobber's pointing downriver it's dragging, it's catching the surface current on top of the water, and that current is actually grabbing that bobber and slowly dragging that presentation down into the strike zone. So that's the perfect drift, you guys. And this is why you want that moving water, because you want that stuff hitting the bottom, you want it dragging along and getting down in front of those fish's face, but you also want it deep enough and dragging hard enough that it's getting that slower presentation than the current. Okay, so the next step, we don't wanna be super attentive to this bobber presentation while it's floating down like a jig or anything. We wanna leave a little candy cane on the water, the way our friend Nick Popov says it. You want a little bit of that line drag so that you can actually have it pulling that bobber down through the current. If I, if every time I mend here, if I'm on bottom properly, if I mend, which is lifting my line up and putting it above the bobber, and I don't have that 10 foot of slack on the water, I'm gonna end up snagging every time I go to mend because I'm pulling all that resistance off of the water and putting it above the bobber, which allows it to go too deep and snag up again. So leaving that little, little belly of line, the little candy can of line below your bobber is what's gonna allow this thing to properly fish and get a nice long drift down below you. All right, everybody. Again, if you guys wanna use this double bead method, be sure to go back to this video, leave some comments below if you have any questions, and really take to heart the certain things that I said here, and it will allow you to catch more fish. Having two presentations in the water at all times is gonna make you a better fisherman, and it's gonna allow you to catch more fish. If you guys like this stuff that you saw today and you want to learn more about how to fish for salmon, steelhead, and trout, go up and click this link to this next informative video that we have. Go down here, hit subscribe, turn on those bell notifications, drop us a like, and do not forget to comment below and you can be the comment of the day like this guy right here. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. You stay fishy and we'll see you out there.